Yeah. So, uh, well. so I, I, when you get a critical, uh, you're in a controlled position, and you've already overcome the first challenge. The first challenge was going to be walking through the ghost field. Um, that was definitely going to be a danger of some kind, right? Um, but, no, Quellen has you locked down. Um, At least one of us does it all the time, kind of. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you've got a guy here who's partially native to the ghost field um, or something. And, yeah, you, you, you come through the other side. Um, the door that opens... So, there are these ghost jars um, that capture spirits. Um, they're, in public, people would see them mostly on a rail jack. Rail jacks are the guys who ride the trains from town to town, and, you know, they have to ride through areas where there's no lightning barrier, so they have to ride on the outside of the train and fight ghosts. Um... They're sort of like steampunk ghostbusters or something. Um, <clears throat> and they carry on themselves uh, with all their various ghost-killing gear in, a, in addition to their electroplasmically powered power armor. Um, they have ghost bottles, and the way I always sort of picture them is that they're sort of just tubes of glass, tubes of frosted glass that appear normal and empty. But when they draw a ghost into it, it's got sort of a, a luminescent glow to it. Maybe they're all a little different, you know, um, depending on the type of ghost that's captured. And in this, uh, the thing we see is a room. The archive echoes from the inside is very dark. Um, there are no lights except for, um, I think oddly in this room, this is where you have coal lamps and candlelight because you wouldn't want to run electroplasm through a room where you're trying to keep ghosts alive. Right. Um, so there are these rows. It looks sort of like a library, right? Or um, I can't I can't not get away from the image of uh, of a Futurama style room with the heads in a jar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's not it's not entirely unlike that. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, there's just these rows of shelves, and on them are all these like glass tubes, and they're all glowing with these faint sort of colors, um, some sort of whitish. I think most ghosts are sort of a whitish, bluish, light, light bluish thing. Um, because ghosts aren't just like, you know, puffy clouds of spirits that go ooh. They are clouds of plasmatic energy. Um, so, yeah, they kind of have a, 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 a lightning-esque quality to them. But some of them are glowing sort of greenish, and some of them red, and uh, purples, and stuff like that. All kinds of different colors. Um, right. and we're in this sort of dark room with these lamps, coal lamps burning, and you'd definitely be able to smell like the, the burning coal. Um, and it would maybe be grating on your throat even to be in here for very long because it kind of gives off some fumes. Um, and one of the walls, there's like these brick walls on the outer edge. One of the walls, the bricks sort of like shudder and it's almost like dust is falling off them but the bricks sort of like crumble away into just a dust and this metal door um, sort of rusted uh, is behind the wall and there's this heavy clunk sound and it flings open and a bunch of wind shoots through the place um, and the dust from the bricks and everything goes flying around. Um, and the three of you step out. Uh -huh. <clears throat> directly in the archive. Alright, if it's correct view, um, Bambino? 
I, I'd like to say that Bingo will just push you against the wall at this point, almost immediately <laughs> after stepping out of the womb. And he says, What in the name of Great Lost Eruvia do you think you're doing, man, bringing me for a place like that? Like, oh, it's fine, see the dirt here, it's no problem. I mean, look, we're fine, we're right in the middle of town, how do you think we're going to get here, otherwise? I imagined a bit of fanfare, some <laughs> this and that, but not, not what you took us to. You're a bookkeeper, for God's sake, not a whisper. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, but, um, you know, I know a couple things, it, it's fine, uh, but, uh, Look, just focus on that we're here, and that we're we're in the middle of Chur Hollow. We can get whatever we need, steal as much as we need. Where's Take the glory in just whatever it is we just did, hmm? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Where's the glory? Uh, Ugh, forget it. Dying. Let's just get this done. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm probably <laughs> holding one of the bottles already. I'm just looking at, looking at it. And I'm probably. Well, I say. Well, I say. Well, you are one of the one of the select few. Put it down. Like I don't even know what that is. Um, yeah. So. Um, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> Um, I, I misspoke uh, last time also. I said Charter Hall was where the governor's palatial fortress is. Um, that's White actually Crown. White. Yeah, that's actually White Crown. Um, but Charter Hall, it does have the university and all that. Um, it's actually just a... Uh, it's it's part of the original city before the, light, the second lightning barrier was built. Um so, uh, yeah, I misspoke a little bit, but, yeah. uh, but, uh, yeah, we're somewhere in, around, or underneath Charter Hall University, um, in the Archive of Echoes. Um, but you're holding a glass jar now, and you guys are taking in the area, um, so, yeah, so there's just, in this room, they're just endless row, And this is a big room, right? It's almost like a warehouse. And there's these, all these rows and rows and rows of spirit bottles. I mean, bingo, if you were worried about walking through the ghost field, like, this, having your attention drawn to just a thousand, uh, thousands and thousands of, of ghosts in jars, um, probably is unsettling to you also. Hmm. He's actually not too unsettled. He's almost immediately forgetting that we just passed through the ghost field. He kind of gazes up at these jars and he, he just says, I once knew a man who drank only this stuff. A large man. A strange man, but... Uh... Uh, oh, I can only imagine he's dead now. Uh, I don't know if he was alive to begin with, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just kind of like really confused now. <laughs> That, that doesn't seem to be possible. I, I didn't learn about that. Oh, I was a bar. He was a... He was a, a funny thing. Some good stories on him. But, uh... Yeah, bad breath. Definitely. Now, which one of these is he way to take, anyway? You're the smart one, clearly. Yeah, so he just kind of rubs his hands together. Like, yes! Ah, let's have a look. And, um... Probably, uh... I think, is there, like, on these, uh, like, rows and rows of spirit jars, are there names or descriptions or anything? Or is it just... Yeah. Yeah, there definitely are. Um, there are names, maybe titles. Um, uh, how are you, are you looking for something specific or something especially notable? Um, what I'd be looking for is definitely... Um, some ancient spirit that was, um, I'm not looking for like a serial killer spirit or anything. That would really be a very bad idea. Um, but something but dangerous, right? Definitely. Like I'm looking for the spirit of like 
a spiritual Leon Trotsky, um, if you will. There's some guy who really, who um, <laughs> probably from like, the beginning of the Cataclysm who said, no, we need to learn how to live together with the ghosts and not build a lightning barrier and create wards. We need to coexist. And then the spirit wardens immediately stabbed him because, of course, that's a terrible idea. So you only basically want like a a traitor ghost, yes. or a heretic ghost. I mean, that, that's that's what I love. But okay, um, so that's that's going to definitely be our first action. Um, you could survey or a study, I suppose. Maybe. I would like to study that. Study like the names and everything, and cross-reference it with what I've learned in school of um, kind of, uh, of ancient ghosts and stuff. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you've, you've got knowledge uh, to do that. Um, I think that uh, you don't have, like, a book. You don't have the, like, you know, Rolodex or whatever <laughs> of, of the names. So it's it's gonna what? take you a while, right? To you've you've got the names in your head or like that kind of thing. Um, so I think for a study, um, you're still controlled. We're gonna still stay controlled because you haven't. I mean, you came through completely unnoticed. You didn't like drag any ghosts in here with you or anything. Um, right. But you, yeah, you're controlled, but you have limited effect. Okay. Um, makes sense. Yeah. And can't you, like, just shift those around with stuff? Yeah. yeah, for free, always you can shift it up to risky, and then you'll have standard effect, or desperate, and you'll have great effect. Um, if you tell me how you're bumping that up. Of course, you can mm. still push yourself, your teammates can give you aid. And I do have a devil's bargain. I have to. Oh, wait, how, many, how much stress is it aid again? Just one. Just one. Okay. Um, are you are you aiding him, Echo? Oh no, I already aided one time. I mean, you can aid this you role. Aid also. again? No, I'm I'm just saying I I I'm, I want to be careful with my stress. Okay, that's also. Good <laughs> I would point. aid you, but I don't know how big I would. It's not exactly <laughs> a learned man. <laughs> is this the one we want? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think right now I'm mostly just like keeping it, like keeping like an eye out. Oh, like, actually, I, I do like, have a spirit bane charm. If if I kind of like place that near the ghost and see which ones don't react, they're going to be the stronger ones, right? Sure. And if they're strong, it probably means they're dangerous. And if they're dangerous, it's probably what we're looking for. Yeah. Will that work? Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. That's, that's, right. that's, I'll that's... give you. I'll yeah. take a stress. And I'll that's... give you. Uh, that is, that is definitely bingo style. I was about to make a joke about bingo walking around and challenging the ghost to combat. <laughs> <laughs> he would if he could. <laughs> a, bo a bottle's no match for him. But I guess he's just like, he's, he, it's like a little um, ring he has on his finger, like a really ornate one. He's just moving it around, the, the ghosts are just waiting. Oh, man. I, I just realized my ghost walk thing, I can probably just fight the ghosts on their own terms. <laughs> just have a fist fight with them. So this charm, this ring you're wearing, is there like, a special jewel, or is there a special carving in it? Or is um, it... it's definitely a Ruvian. It's kind of like um, I, I guess he kind of won it in a fight one day. He kind of decided like the look of it, and it's like a small uh, ruby, a very small one, very like badly cut. And it's yeah. kind of just jammed in there onto this ring, but it's uh, you know, it's got like a, a little bit of wisping inside it. So, yeah, he doesn't know how it works, but okay. it does the job. Um, helps him sleep at night. So, so you'll have an extra right. dice from that, Bandy, and okay. I'll let you hear my devil's bargain. Um, yeah, I'd like to hear it. My devil's bargain is... To get the ghosts out of here, right? To grab up a, a bottle and leave, there is definitely a security system in place that you'll have to get around. Right. Hmm. I'm not sure if I want to take that devil's bargain. I think I might just take go with the three dice. Okay. Three dice but, is still uh, pretty good. Yeah, three dice yeah. is good. And you want to stay at controlled limited? Um, 
You know what? I'll push it up to risky and try and get standard. Okay, risky standard. Yeah, so we're kind of like rushing it a bit. Uh, a bit, a bit. But, uh, it'll be fine. The longer we no wait. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. longer we wait, the less more likely stuff's going to go wrong and roll. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, close. So a four. Oh, well. So. Four's pretty bad. It's not a fail. So what's our consequence? Well. Okay, we're not going to push it to a desperate position yet. We're established at risky, and I'm happy with that. But there is a complication. You're you're moving around, and you find you don't find, you know, uh, uh, Duskwall Leon Trotsky, but you do find where they're keeping it. You you look at these names and all these like bookcases and they're just like this is just like a duke of something and he probably knew something about um you know uh brickwork right or something and this was a carver of some kind these are all academic at best and this is all the this is all the bullshit and you're wandering around and you find a different area of the place <clears throat> um and it's almost entirely dark. There aren't even... There are, like... The shelves sort of stop, and then there's a round area. And you can see in the darkness, there's sort of this... Um, like an altar, almost, sort of circular. Uh, on sort of a raised uh, sort of platform. And there are all these, like, strange symbols and stuff carved in the ground around it. And this is the only place where you've seen what is probably electroplasmic gear. There's this sort of cage um, around this thing. It's not blocked off. It's not like a cage like bars that keep you from moving between it. But there, there are these big metal uh, sort of frame around the thing um, in sort of a you know hexagonal pattern. Um, that aren't active now, but you can tell, like, this is a miniature lightning barrier. Right. We're, we're keeping... So is this where they released the ghosts? Well, either... It seems like a fail-safe. If something happened and one of... And something happened here that would be ghost-related, either, oh, God, we broke a shelf and there's a thousand ghosts, run to the safe spot, right? Okay. Or, which is much more likely to your eyes... Bendy. We need to keep whatever's in there in. Right. Um, and that's the spot you want to find your special ghost field tube. Okay. The the complication that kicks off. Um, that's that's more or less you found what you're looking for, but you'll have to be careful. But the real complication is, you guys here. Um, a big cling and a bunch of lights at the far end of the place come on and you start to, and you hear some voices being you know hushed speaking you can't really make out everything they're saying but it's something like I, I heard something kind of like thing so there there's somebody coming in now to to check things out like they heard something or maybe one of you bingo shouted too loud or something yep but yeah, there is somebody coming in to check up on the situation. Right. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, yeah. Bandy's definitely yeah. gonna probably tell um, tell Echo or uh, Bingo like I'm kind of like preoccupied, just like go, go deal with that. Uh, I'll think I can handle this. Yeah, I, I just nod and I, hold, I do a thing where I, I just hold like a finger to my like you know my mouth over my mask yes, but yeah and I, and I, 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 I skulk away I think um yeah and uh, and what about you bingo 
uh, <laughs> I give Bandy Boy a, a nod and a smile, and I say, "Get that spirit, lad. We've got this." <laughs> Uh, and I kind of like yank the spear out from the, the scabbard on my back. And I kind of just <laughs> just walk down the walk down the corridor. No shit's good. They've got all the ghost bottles. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Are there any empty ones lying around? Us? <laughs> um, I mean, there'd be something else to do to find a ghost bottle if you're going to murder these dudes. No, yeah. Like if we were like, here's the thing about if we murder them, everyone will instantly know someone's died. Yeah, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. When when somebody dies, um, the oh yeah, yeah, the spirit bells ring. I never said I was gonna kill him. I know, I know. I just want to make sure we we understand. <laughs> just making sure, yeah, yeah, we're all Wait, on the Justin, same is page. Is that door still here? Oh yeah, yeah, that door is definitely. Still oh man, maybe, maybe maybe we could just lure him over and just yes. shove him through the door. And lock it. <laughs> Throw him into the ghost field. Shove him into the ghost room. Well, I, I feel bad for them. That's just for it us. Is, it is unhealthy to spend a lot of time in the ghost field. Um, so, okay, well, let's let's see you two dealing with what these guys. Say, uh, let's let's see you two dealing with these guys. Uh, let's start. Uh, let's have Bingo. Bingo hasn't done any rolling or spending of stress yet. I think I, I, I spent one stress to eight, but that's about it. Yeah. So these guys. Uh, oh, right. That's right. Um, these guys come in, and whoever they are, they kind of split right, and they're walking up either aisle on the far sides. Um, so let's have Bingo deal with one group. Um, it's, so how um, many are there? Um, there's, uh, I think there's just two guys, right? Um, so they split in half. It's just one and one. Okay. Um, he, what does he look like? I don't think it's a, it's not like an Imperial soldier. Uh, it's definitely not a blue coat. It's probably some kind of campus a household god maybe yeah yeah something like that um and it's not a spirit warden but he's he's not um a professor or something he is dressed like a guard of some kind um it's not super heavy gear um but he's got a lantern i think um a coal lantern that he's holding um seems to be a theme right in this room you don't bring electroplasmic stuff and he doesn't have, like, a sword out and be like, I'm going to find you and make a noise. He's got a... I think his, like, defensive tool is a staff. Um, that's got sort of a metal cap on the end of it. Um, yeah, so that's what you see, is this guy. And he's just got this staff and this lantern, and he's just sort of, like, walking with his staff and moving through. What do you do, Bingo? Okay, um, I, bet, uh, I guess it's quite misty in here, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's not kind misty enough of... to hide, obviously, but I mean, it's really dark, so it's not that tough to hide. But it is sort of, yeah, there is sort of a haze from the, all the coal lamps, lamps going on. Okay, all right. Um, well, I'm gonna be a little bit bold. I'm not gonna kill him because that's just gonna cause problems for everyone, and I don't want to do that. But what I want, what I do want to do, is basically just like kind of walk out of the darkness straight towards him to stop a, yeah, a couple meters away from it when basically he sees me and what he says uh but it, from the darkness before i meet him i want to start just rattling my manacles and chain that i have just in the darkness you know creep him out a little bit you know a little bit scary a little bit spooky set them tone uh what does he say as i i sort of appear out of this this darkness towards him um are you are you trying to like frighten him or something? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to frighten him. <laughs> okay. I, I pull out my fine, scary weapon. I I, I guess I put, put away the uh, the glaive back into the thing, and I pull out these like two very, very sharp and very jagged-looking knives. Uh, they're quite scary, right? I count that, but if not, a sickle will oh, do. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um, that that is involved. Uh, so, what do you think you're rolling? I'm gonna command him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the intimidate, threaten, yeah. scary thing. Um, so I sort of, uh, you know, I come out of the shadows and I stop short. You know, in armor, it's a little bit of a strange accent with these two, you know, fuck off knives, one in each hand, and she just says, um, "A puny weapon for a puny man. Do you want to go home to your family tonight, or would you like to die here on the floor?" I'm sure we can find a bottle for you. 
Uh, should I roll? Uh, well, so your effect, um, you're at risky, um, but I think you have great effect between, like, your scary-looking weapons, right, and everything else. Um, <sighs> Devil's Bargain... Um... Uh, yeah, I'll take a Devil's Bargain for Heat. Uh, I'll take, if you give me two Heat. Uh, uh, I feel bad because the rest of the crew suffers for that kind of Devil's Bargain. That's but it. I'm going to take that. All right. <laughs> uh, just because we need to get rid of this guy and killing him is not going to be easy. Cool. So you've got three or an extra dice. I'm not sure. Yeah, I just I just got one in command. Okay. So it's risky. Um, no other way to get any more dice is there. Uh, not that aid. I mean, we didn't establish for sure that Echo is dealing with the other guy. He could be helping you also instead. You could do one well, at a time. Well, do you want to help me, Echo, or would you rather just deal with your own guy and I can taste take this? Yeah, I, I, th I think we're we're split we're we're splitting. You. You're you're taking this one guy and I'm taking the other guy. Okay, uh, that's cool. Well, I've just got the one extra bonus dice then. Cool. Oof, uh, that's not great. But I got a four, so that's, uh, yeah. A consequence. <laughs> <laughs> so you do it. He's gonna, he's gonna be frightened. Um, I want to give you a choice, actually. I want to see how you react. So, so he's got this staff, right? And I think uh, what he does is he, when he sees you, his first reaction is he he's obviously frightened, right? He thinks like, oh my god, there's a demon or a ghost or something in the fucking archive of that ghost. Um, and he bangs his staff on the ground, the butt of it. Um, and that metal cap, uh, I think, like, um, some sparks shoot off of it, um, and it starts to glow. Um, oh, damn. And, like, it's little... Glow and stuff. With, like, arcs of, of electroplasm coming off of it. Um, he's not going to attack you. So, he'll back away slowly, right? He's got to go get help, but either... So, if he goes away slowly, he's so frightened he's not thinking. And now he's lit up some electroplasmic weapon, right? If you let him go slowly, he's probably going to agitate these ghosts in these bottles and something's going to happen, right? You'll be in a desperate position for that. Or, your desperate position is, you've got to get him to run a little more forcefully. Um, if you get him to hurry the hell up out of here, uh, by, you know, getting mixed up with him, right, physically, a little bit, at least, then <laughs> then he'll go away getting, slow. Getting mixed up with him physically, okay, alright. And both of those will be desperate positions, I just want to know which one you, you prefer. Um... Bingo, I don't think I don't think he truly knows how dangerous ghosts are. He's just like he's just stupid. He's really just like not a wise guy. He's just too interested in himself. So he doesn't he sees this staff light off and he kind of just let, lets off like a chuckle and just lets <laughs> the guy agitate the ghosts. Like he doesn't even that doesn't even like come to his mind that that might f piss them off. Okay. So it, it, he just wouldn't occur to him. <laughs> Yeah, he, he like bangs the staff and like holds it out and starts backing up and he's like, You stay back, you bastard. Um and he's backing up slowly, so um yeah, you don't give chase to him, you know he's he's backing off. Um Well So Here's here's what happens then, bingo. Mm hmm I mean, are you gonna like... do anything to try and oh, keep? Oh, sorry. Are you gonna sorry, do? 
Are you going to do anything uh, to try and keep a ghost from going wild around him? Um, I guess I kind of like kind of walk forwards a little bit. I mean, obviously he's backing off, and I just want to keep walking forwards, and I just want to have my ring held up. Just, you know, I guess I can feel them getting a little bit agitated, so it's just kind of standard procedure is keep the spirit bane charm nearby, and that might... Maybe it doesn't calm them down, but it stops them from getting really annoyed or breaking out and coming closer. So I guess okay. I'm just I'm kind of stalking forward towards him. Okay. Just you trying should... to, like, soothe the ghost that he's agitating as he goes. You should, you should gently caress each bottle as you pass. Yeah, I'm running my fingers <laughs> hips over them. <laughs> Um, what are we rolling there? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, I guess I could try and sway the ghost. Maybe if you have if that, or that. I guess swaying the ghost is a really big, t a tall order. <laughs> I mean, you can try and sway. I think you're at limited effect for that. Like, you could keep them calm for a little while, but eventually they would be breaking out um, if they want to. Um, yeah. the, the one that would give you better effect, uh, would be a tune, I think. I think if you did a tune, uh, we'd put you at, uh, uh, we'd put you at standard effect. Um, I think I'll go with Sway. So, I got the dot, and he, it's the kind of thing you do. Yeah. He's, you try and charm a ghost. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, I might take too stress to give myself an extra dice, because I don't want to mess this up, but... I don't know if that's worth it, to be honest. Um. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, we probably don't want to deal with the ghosts. Yeah. I don't. I don't really have a devil's bargain for a move that results from a devil's bargain. So. I. I will take. I'll take the two stress then for an extra dice. Okay. Uh, desperate with limited effect, and one extra dice. Wow, that's not good. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh dear. Well. Well, GG. <laughs> so you're, years later, you're like stalking knock over the shelf when you try and grab one of the bottles. You're you're stalking forward and like your hand is rubbing against the bottles and and all that. And this guy is getting even more afraid as he sees you. He, what he sees is you stalking him down, right? Um, but uh, one of these ghost jars he walks by and it's like a this almost black, deep red, crimson glow oh, in this jar. Um, it's a very angry spirit, um, and and it, what's the name on it? It's like the name on it is Carlo the Strangler, like <laughs> <laughs> it was like you know some uh, some serial killer, right, uh, or something uh, who uh, knew a lot about you know. Uh, strangling? Some murder cult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he was an expert at strangling. Uh, he, knew, he knew a lot about some murder cult, right? That's a that's an object of study for the past or something. Um, he wasn't particularly powerful himself, but the reason they keep him is because he knew stuff. But he is very angry, um, and I think the jar, like, it just sort of, like, flashes, and that's really the best he can do as a spirit in a jar. But this guy is already on edge, and his nerves are completely shot. And when that jar flashes, he, like, turns all of a sudden and hits the actual jar with his staff and, you know, causes the jar to burst open. And, yeah, that ghost is escaped. Um, and it wouldn't go after I him. I can't try and... Uh... Perhaps um, <clears throat> resist that by like Absolute, just absolutely. launching forward and just trying to do that typical cartoon thing where you just stop the jar just short of the floor in my hands. Yeah, <laughs> uh, for sure, for sure, you can resist. Uh, um, prowess, I imagine. Uh, yeah, if you like run grabbing the jar. Yeah. Kind of yeah. just like jumping yeah. forward because I think you when you resist on just prowess and slight resolve, right? Not stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to just jump forward. I, I kind of see the thing. I, I see him knock over in slow motion. And I'm just like my face turns from kind of having a good time to oh shit. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> and it, it kind of just like uh, you know, drops the knives and just jumps forward and just tries to catch it as the guy you know runs. Uh, so yeah, um, no bonus die. I don't think. Um, so yeah. yeah, there's no devil's bargains or anything for that. Uh, 
Yeah, one stress. One stress, yeah. So it, it smacks the jar, and it goes falling off the, the shelf, and you reach up, ran up, and just catch it before it hits the ground. Um, and he yeah, stares at you for a second, utterly terrified, and now you have this, like, glow around you because you're holding the spirit jar, and he's just, he just gone. <laughs> Can't get at him. I kind of hold this thing, and I'm like, I, I guess I'm holding this murderer, I'm like, it's coming handy. And I've already annoyed him, so I kind of just like uh, hold it in my hand with the spirit bane charm, just to really rile him up in case I need him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I kind of just slide it into my belt, and um, I kind of uh, look to see if I can find Bambino. Well, well, oh. we, we we know the strategy. If we really need to fuck some, fuck some people up, we just hurl the jar at that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, you can totally add that to your items. It's like Pokemon. <laughs> we just get a bunch of <laughs> Car Carlo the Strangler in a jar. Like R-rated Pokemon, yeah. <laughs> is that um like uh, an actual load or is it like free load? Ah, uh, spirit jar. That's, that's I think the spirit jar is just regular attack and whisper. Just like I mean, it doesn't take up load. Um, I'm not sure though. On my sheet, it's uh, two spirit bottles is one load. Okay, oh, so okay. just one. Uh, yeah, call that call that no load. Yeah, that's fine. one's fine. That's cool. I, I'm not heavy load anyway, so. Yeah. Well, if, if it's just one jar, you can say that's no load. Okay. If it mm -hmm. takes two to make one, then, you know, you know I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Go ahead and do much better than I did, Echo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Echo. Uh, yeah, so all that's happening on the other end, like, you're pretty much simultaneous. Uh, what, what do you do with this guy? Mm. And it's the yeah, same I sort have... of deal. Lantern, staff, kind of thing. And then this room is, like, this, this room is, like, really, like, um... What's the word they have? It seems like really dark, right? I imagine these, these like these like all these like old coal lanterns are pretty like shitty, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think I kind of like I kind of reach into like reach over the back like my like my butler's outfit and like pull out like a little like hood like a thin like cloth hood from under it and like put it like over my head and I'm gonna use my uh, my fine shadow cloak. Oh sweet, sweet. So yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna and yeah, I'm, I'm, so I kind of just like blend into the into like the into like the like shadows. I'm just gonna like yeah, I'm just gonna creep up, uh, creep up towards this guy, wait until he like he like looks over to like, the side for just a second. And I'm just gonna swoop in and like just grab him and like choke him. Okay, so you're gonna take him out, yeah, Metal Metal Gear Solid style. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um. So what are you what are you rolling? Um. Hunt, maybe? I think, yeah, hunt. Yeah, that makes sense. And... I mean, you've got the position on him. Um, you've got your ninja coat. <laughs> I, heard, I heard that. Snuck it in there, did you? Um... Well, we, we were at risky to start, so I think you're risky. Uh, I think you're risky great. This guy is not ready for you to attack him. He's ex Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's how Bingo started out, so we'll see where we get. <laughs> it ended pretty badly, though. Um, risky. Effects are great. And. Oh, um. I almost forgot. Uh, I can offer you Devil's Bargain. Can I? Um, yeah, I'll give you the Devil's Bargain for two heat. Once again, same thing. Eh, nah, I think I got this. Okay, you got this. Alright, go for it then. Uh, okay, uh, kind of. Well, you technically got it. Kind of. Um, so two options. You grab him and you're choking him and, uh, obviously he struggles with you, right? Uh, you've got one of two options. The first one is you struggle for a while. He's going to drop that lantern and it's going to 
uh, burst open and cause a fire that you'll have to deal with. But you can deal with it. Um, um, yeah, we'll just call that a, we're just gonna call that desperate position. Uh, you can obviously resist that if you want, right? And take him out and catch the lantern and stuff. But it's up to you. So what, what do you do? I, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna like I think I'm gonna like resist that, Justin. Okay, so yeah, you're choking him, and he's he's going down, but not quickly enough, and he starts to lose his. He's swinging around wildly, trying not to hit the shells because he doesn't want to die from that. Uh, but yeah, he's losing his grip on his lantern as he's swinging around. Uh, how do you resist this this outcome? I think I'm just gonna stick my foot out and like try to catch the lantern as he drops it <laughs> on my foot. <laughs> <laughs> so you like you like plant and get the leverage and just catch it on your foot as he goes yeah. to sleep. Uh, all right, that's definitely uh, prowess. Sweet, and it's, it's it's equivalent to like the amount of like skills you have dots in, right? Yeah, and if you, you just roll it, it'll do it. If you just click wow. the word prowess, it will it will roll that. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Boom. Oh, nice. All right. One stress. Not bad. Yeah. Nice. Um, I mean, you get it. Uh, things got a little heated, uh, but, you know, you're not sweating too bad over it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I think the guy just, like, see, like, as, as I'm checking out, he just sees my, like, my weird mask reflected in one of the bottles in front of him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and he looks terrified. He's certain that you are choking the life out of him, and he's going to become some sort of horrible vampire creature. Um, but yeah, he eventually like, and he lets the staff go and it just like clung clung on the ground. Um, and he's out. Sweet. I mean, maybe just before we go back to Bambino, I would like to think that Bingo might go and check if that goes okay. And if no one's taken that staff, it looked pretty cool. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. Just in case ghosts attack us. I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, let's... Uh, yeah, we got... we got. Yeah, let's see what Bandy does. So Bandy, they're back there dealing with stuff. Um, yeah, how do you... How do you approach this... This situation yeah. you're in? So it's like this miniature... Um, lightning barrier cage, right? Around this, um, like, other part of the uh, archive, right? Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I'm just kind of, you know, um, just have a quick look around, see if there are any, um, if there's like, I don't think that there'd be like a trap mechanism or anything, but uh, I know that the, whichever spirit I'm looking for, it's over near this um, direction, and um, I'm gonna st I'm gonna try and find the spirit, and uh, yeah, take it, uh, try and I know, so... take it away. So it's like a, yeah, it's like this circular end of the room, and there's this little weird frame cage around it, um, and in like what's what's being framed by this cage in the middle, there's sort of a raised up thing, and then this circular, almost altar looking thing. And, uh, oh yeah, of course, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, that's um, that's then, where you definitely sense the spirits from. Then yeah, I'm definitely gonna like carefully walk up to the altar, and uh, and he's kind of like we actually really excited inside because like all of this was history all of this was boring stuff he learned in the classroom right but now he's actually here like this is yeah. the place oh yeah back in dusk wall they've got this big uh, archive but you guys are never going to see it but yeah. there there's all this cool uh, whisper stuff and now i'm here <laughs> so and like Bandy's kind of freaking out inside i think i think you've heard about it actually this that's good that You've heard about this thing. It's called the uh, it's called the vault, the spirit, the ghost vault, um, and they they've talked about how like yeah, really dangerous spirits they keep in the ghost vault, and only a few people even know how that that it exists. First of all, um, or where it is, and even fewer people, like maybe three in the world, really know how to open it. Um, and you come up to this thing and you step up on this little platform where this uh, altar is. And it's like, it's sort of almost chest high. Um, and it's probably, you know, three feet, like a meter across in uh, diameter. And um, 
And on the top, there are like these metal rings that are, they're all sort of brassy. Um, and there's definitely these strange runes and signs written on them. Um, and I uh, think, uh, I think you know the nature at least of the lock. Um, because you've, you've heard about this, that, uh, the lock requires putting these rings in a certain position so that they recite they recite uh, uh, some sort of litany, right, or something from the uh, Church of Ecstasy um, oh, right. against, you know, protection against spirits that the Emperor sort of devised. Um, and when you put it in the right arrangement um, in this, the language of this litany, it will let you access the vault. All right. So what I'm what I'm thinking of is uh, first Ben is going to kind of like take a couple looks at it and um, remembers kind of from his from his training um, how it's supposed to work. But he, he takes his uh, spirit mask out and he puts it on <laughs> and um, he's going to try and attune and look through the kind of ghost field and see um, he's going to try and cheat and see if he can like uh, look in how it was once and uh, like see I don't know if it's possible but um, the ghost field like look back in time and see how it was opened and try and like reverse engineer it from there sure um, wow uh, is that a fine I mean, spirit I don't mask know it is a fine spirit mask I'm not sure if this is possible feel free to veto me on this well, I think that here's the trick. It's not necessarily looking back in time. I think you know the words of the litany, but this language is, a, is like a, a language created just by uh, the people who like house the spirits or whatever. Oh, right, okay. But what you can do is access the ghost field to read the language. You know the litany. Right. But if you can read the language, I think it's something more akin to that. Um, but I'm going to say risky great again. Uh, that's okay. where we started everybody else. Yeah, let's let's let the dice tell us what you find out. Um, yes. As a devil's bargain, uh, you get help. <laughs> <laughs> you get help from a right. ghost. I am all about that devil's bargain. <laughs> Uh, so there's a ghost that when you attune your spirit mask, your spirit mask actually breaks through the barrier somewhat, and a powerful spirit in there is able to reach out and at least touch even just a sliver of you and help you open the thing. Right. Um, I'm all about that devil's bargain. Yeah. Nice. Oh, okay, God. so risky, great... One bonus die. Should I push myself? Screw it. I haven't spent stress yet. I'm going to push myself as well. Well, if you take the devil's bargain, you can't also push yourself. Oh, okay. So it's a yeah. either or. All right. So just one. And. Come on. Ooh, oh! No. That's not good. Oh, Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing so well, too. Oh. Yep. You see, you weren't opening yeah, something. Mean, that's the problem. Right, <laughs> you didn't phrase it right. You should have opened the ghost field yeah, to read the yeah. language. That's my bad. <sighs> got my I'm good at everything except whispering. <laughs> so, you're reading it, and when you get the ga the mask, and you feel something try to like wiggle just just a tendril into your mind, and you you reciprocate. You say, "Okay, sure, help me." Um, but then all of a sudden it floods in and they, your hands just reach out all of a sudden and just start spinning the circles, right? And you, before you even know what you've done, you've opened it and um, two things happen right away. Uh, the, the symbols are all in place and they sort of spark for a second um, and 
this altar thing uh, splits open and starts to move, um, the whole apparatus you're standing on splits open to like four equal sections. And you can see all these spirit bottles lining inside of it. And they're all... Like, the other ones are really faint and stuff. And these are all, like, there's just a glow that comes out of this thing. Um, but then you see one of the bottles is cracked. Um, there's this little sliver crack on it. And your eye just goes immediately to it. You catch it with your spirit mask, the look of it, and you... You're sort of in shock from your body being taken over or whatever for a moment. And when you see that cracked bottle, uh, immediately that lightning cage around you bursts into life. Yeah. And there is electroplas there's an electroplasmic field surrounding you now. Um, Can I try and resist that consequence of the, of the cracked bottle uh, setting up the electroplasmic field? Uh, yes, yes you may. How do you do that? Um, I'm planning on think, um, of using Resolve because I think, I'm not quite sure if this is what happens, but I think the crack from the bottle is letting off some pressure that activates the field. I'm going to try and channel that the energy coming off that electro, uh, the cracked spirit bottle into myself and take the stress <laughs> that way. Damn. Damn. Oh, God. So instead of, instead of radiating and activating the field, I'm just going to suck it up with my That's hardcore. Power. That is hardcore. Uh... Yeah, roll that. Jumping right. proverbial grenade there. Yep, but uh, all right. Well, resolve it is. What's the resolve like? I'm still about to find out, aren't I? Three. Oh, hey. one stress. Just one like stress. everybody else. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you you kind of draw this spirit energy toward you, um, before it can set off the lightning barrier, um, and uh, uh, are we still good to go for another hour? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Let's take a break. Um, we're right at another hour, so let's take a break and uh, and do this next part because it's we still have some funky stuff to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So well, we've been pretty l lucky-ish. We're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, yeah, let's take five.